Hello everyone and welcome to the part two of this Amazon Bedrock Agent course series. In our part two today, we will deep dive into Agent Core Runtime. Please note that Agent Core is in preview while I'm recording this tutorial. So yes, it can change and if it changes, we will take it ahead from there. But right now it is in preview. I've mentioned some reference URLs over here. I would certainly recommend that you visit these URLs as they have additional information on this topic. I've created two playlists on my channel, one for Amazon Bedrock and other one dedicated to Agent Core. As I create additional tutorials and labs, I will have them added to these playlists. So if you're looking for only Agent Core, then refer to this playlist. If you're looking for videos and labs, overall for Amazon Bedrock, then please visit its corresponding playlist. All these URLs will be mentioned in the description of this video. So in our part one, I basically gave an overview of Agent Core and we kind of briefly touched upon the different modules of Agent Core. What we are going to do today is we are going to actually deep dive into Agent Core runtime. So this is the one. So what is Agent Core Runtime? Agent Core Runtime provides a secure serverless hosting environment for deploying and running AI agents and tools. This is the simplest definition that you can give anyone, especially if you're going for an interview that, hey, Agent Core Runtime is a secure serverless hosting environment where you can deploy and execute your AI agents and tools. Very simple. Now, keep in mind that Amazon Bedrock is a fully managed service and Agent Core and Agent Core Runtime are part of Amazon Bedrock. And by virtue of that, they are also fully managed. Hence, Agent Core Runtime basically handles your scaling, session management, security isolation, and most importantly, infrastructure management. It's a fully managed service. Whenever you go ahead and deploy your application, you know, whether it's an agent or a tool, whatever it may be, we're just going to use the word application. Then that particular application needs to be containerized. Okay, this is going to be very, very important, guys. So the reason I'm doing this deep dive is because some of these concepts are going to be, be very important. You have to keep that in mind that, hey, this agent that I'm deploying over here is going to be containerized and it's going to be containerized on and deployed on a Docker container. And when we do the lab, I'm going to create a lab on this as well. You will see that those containers are created using Docker and ECR. When we go into the lab, you will look and, you know, you, you will observe those details. So keep this in mind that it has to be containerized. And once it is containerized, it processes the user inputs, maintains the con context and executes different actions using AI capabilities. So when you create an agent using agent code runtime, let's say you're deploying your agent over there, you're creating your agent over there. What you do essentially is you're defining its behavior, capabilities, and tools that it can access. Each agent that is deployed has a unique identity and an immutable version for deployment. Each version contains the necessary configuration that is needed for execution. Agent Core Runtime also supports long-running transactions, but only up to eight hours. So while it's in preview, it's eight hours. Maybe later it may change. We do not know. But right now it is eight hours. And to run an agent or a tool or an application using Agent Core Runtime, you will need an IAM execution role. This is also very, very important. When you do the lab, you will see that we will create this role. Without this role, this is not going to work. So you keep this in mind. 
And there are two ways to create an agent with agent code runtime. First is using the starter toolkit. And second is using the agent code Python SDK, fast API, and of course, Docker. So on this particular page, there are a few things you have to keep in mind. First is the definition. Second is that agent core runtime is fully managed. Third is that every time you create an agent or deploy an agent on agent core runtime, it will get a unique identity and a version. That version has everything necessary for execution. To run an agent or a tool on agent core runtime, you need an IAM role for execution. And remember that everything has to be containerized. This is the most important part to be deployed and, and executed on agent core runtime. And there are two ways to basically create an agent with agent core runtime. That is using the starter kit or Python SDK, fast API and Docker. So these are the core items that you need to remember. Now let us look at endpoints. So each endpoint has a unique ARN and it references a specific version. So when you update your agent, a new version is created. But remember that the default endpoint always points to the latest version. Again, this is going to be very important during the lab. If you want to call a specific version, then you will have to figure out which version it is and call that version. But if you are using the default endpoint, then the default endpoint basically points to the latest version. And endpoints can be updated without any downtime. So hence, there are basically, you know, uh, uh, seamless version transitions and rollbacks. Now let us look at sessions. So sessions basically represent interaction between your users and agent core runtime. Now, every time a user and an agent core runtime agent interacts, a session has been created. And this session has a unique runtime session ID. Very important. You will see again in the lab that basically there's a runtime session ID. Now, this session basically runs in a dedicated micro VM with isolated CPU, memory, and file system resources. Remember over here, we have security isolation and session management. This is fully managed by the way, but you need to know that this is what is happening behind the scenes. And once the session is terminated, then this micro VM is destroyed and memory is sanitized. Now remember that sessions are short lived. That means they are ephemeral. If you want to maintain your context for long term, or then you have to use agent core memory. Finally, what are the different protocols that agent core runtime supports? There are two of them, HTTP and MCP. So you can use HTTP for simple request response patterns. Again, HTTP runs on 8080. And if you have standardized agent tool interactions, of course, you'll create an MCP server and that runs on port 8000. Very important, again, for the lab. Otherwise, you'll be scrambling. So remember the port numbers, okay? If you do not know what MCP is all about, I have created a dedicated 10-part series on MCP. Please refer to that. I will not be going into the details of what MCP is, how it works, why are we doing certain things. So please go and watch that series, deep dive into MCP. MCP is one of the hottest things in the market. If you are looking for a job, then you have to know MCP. Okay, there are a lot of organizations that are currently building MCP service and that trend will continue for the next one to two years. Why? Because you can monetize them. They can monetize their data, right? So go and look at that series and then come back and continue with agent core or simple. Just work with HTTP. So guys, this is it from me today. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. 
do post your comments if you are new to my channel do like and subscribe and i will see you shortly in some other video till then take care bye bye